Hey guys, Dr. Christy Ennis, physical therapist, certified strength and conditioning specialist and nutritionist. And today we're gonna go over how to heal your rotator cuff injury or tear without surgery. Now, obviously this doesn't hold true for everybody. Not everybody could get away without having surgery. So yes, I know you've probably talked to a bunch of people that have had rotator cuff surgery. And I'm not saying that that won't absolutely have to happen, but I certainly treated a ton of patients that were told they were gonna have to have surgery and then didn't even need to with some other treatment. So always try something a little more conservative before you go right to the surgery route. And then I have my patients always tell my patients, if it doesn't work, you really haven't lost that much, and then go ahead and you can try a different route if you need to for that. So for today, we're gonna go over the stuff that you can do at home on your own to help heal these tears. Now you've got four rotator cuff muscles, so you can obviously have a tear in any one of those. The most common one is right up here. And so doesn't mean, like I said, that you can't have other muscles. So a lot of times pain is in the front where it attaches on top or even underneath here. Again, that's just where some of those muscles are. So pay attention to those little areas that might be uncomfortable. Now, step one, you probably already know this, but just in case you don't, is ice, right? If you've just had an injury, there's gonna be some sort of trauma typically, or not even trauma, but you just caught and got that pain. There's usually a little bit of inflammation in there. So putting ice on it several times a day, 20 minutes or so at a time is where you wanna start. That's number one. Number two, what I see as one of the biggest issues for people is actually sleeping. And it's super hard to control what you do in your sleep. So I'm gonna show you some different things with some pillows. So if you are, let's just say my injury is on my left side, if you're a back sleeper, you can take a pillow, prop it right underneath that arm, and you may have to play around a little bit with how high that pillow is, but this is a good place to start with that shoulder resting so you're helping to support it. Now, if you're a side sleeper and you don't fortunately sleep on the side that's painful, I'm just gonna go the other way so I can keep on that left side. You still actually wanna have, pretend I have pillows under my head, not my feet, but you still wanna have a pillow here to help support that shoulder so it doesn't flop over, okay? Now, the worst case scenario <laughs> is if you are a side liar and you lie on that side, okay? Again, hard to control what we do in our sleep, but we can try to help create a little, little. So if you have your pillows here, and then we have another pillow here, so my hip is almost going on that pillow, and you may need to prop it up a little bit more. Now I'm at least putting less pressure on that shoulder. It's a little bit supported off the ground with those pillows. So one of those three methods will hopefully work for you, okay? All right, so we've got ice, we've got pillows, and then I'm gonna stand up. This one is called the pendulum, and all it's doing is helping to take pressure off of that area. So you can kind of lean over right on a chair or a counter. You're letting that arm dangle. Don't hold it, you're letting it dangle, and then you're adding a little circle. Sometimes you just need to start with back and forth, but you should do this exercise and go, ah, yes, that feels so good. And that's how all of these should be. You wanna make sure that you're avoiding pain as you're doing these things, okay? So that is that. That one you can do any time during the day when your shoulder is bothering you. Now, typically what happens is that you also start to get some scar tissue buildup. So I'm gonna grab the derma edge. We're gonna go, remember I said that three out of those four actually attach right here. So we're gonna work on all of those muscles around that area, okay? And usually it feels really good to kind of get into the front of that arm, get a little bit of blood flow going to get some of that healing going. You can even get through the back of the arm a little bit there, but usually kind of the top up here and here tend to feel the best. And you'll notice it'll feel bumpy <laughs> because you just had an injury there. So it's getting kind of blech, okay? That's the technical term again. All right, now the other, kind of big issue that happens is that we start to lose range of motion, right? So to help ease that along, I could tell you to just raise your arm. That's not gonna work so well. Those muscles are cranky and aggravated. So we want to do some active assisted range of motion. And the one that I tend to find works the best for people is if you can get a rolling pin or a foam roller, and I'm gonna sit down, you can either do this at the, you know, the dining room table, the kitchen table, the counter, but putting those arms on there and then very slowly, you're not applying a lot of pressure, but very slowly kind of rolling forward with it, you wanna stop before you get to a point of pain, right? So it's just nice and gentle. And you should notice even that you might be able to go a little bit further as you start to move out. I always go with forward first. You can then go almost at a little bit of an angle 
But I'm going to tell you right now that straight out to the side is really not going to feel good. So don't even try that. So start with the forward, and then you can go ahead, like I said, a little bit of an angle. If that hurts, though, back off. All right, go back to your pendulums. All right, from there, I'm actually going to come. I'm using all the equipment in my room right now, I feel like. But we're going to do a little bit of a self-mobilization. So again, this is my sore arm. I'm going to press down into this bar. So you can do this again on a counter. Just move this chair out of the way. <laughs> I'm going to take my other hand and place it right over. So press down, take the other hand over, and then I'm going to kind of scoot down, or you can even try to scoot back. You can play around and see which feels comfortable. Again, no pain. So if you do this and you go, ow, please stop. Just stick with the beginning stuff that we talked about. But a lot of times, people go, oh my gosh, yeah, this really feels good. So you just hold for a couple seconds and come up. So you're doing repetitions of this, okay? About 10 or so-ish. We'll use ish here. All right, moving on. If it's tolerable, what I tend to find is an isometric contraction can help spare the muscle and the pain, but get blood flow going to help heal. And one of the most common ones to do that's going to help is keep that elbow in at your side, take that opposite hand to the outside of the arm. So my left hand is going to push out, my right hand is going to push in. Neither one is actually going to move, that's why it's isometric. And you have control of how hard you're pushing. So you can start with just a nice little gentle push, hold for about five seconds or so, and then relax. Probably about 10 repetitions, again, as long as it feels okay. And you'll do that two or three times a day, roughly, okay? And then a lot of times we start to cradle that shoulder, it gets sore. We're now going into this position. So we want to stop that because you don't want to cause injury other places too. So a nice easy one that you guys have seen me do a ton if you've watched any of my videos are just little shoulder blade squeezes, okay? That helps to take some of the pressure off of this area. So it might just help with pain itself. But then we're also going to help prevent some other yucky stuff from happening, okay? So there you have it. That was a huge rundown of stuff. Again, not everything will work. But there should be some really awesome ideas in there for you to help heal that. Give it a little bit of time. You may need to go to a physical therapist too. Sometimes I add in some dry needling and some soft tissue work for my patients. But this is the stuff I always give them that seems to help. So thanks again for tuning in today and stay tuned for more. Please click subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks guys.